Welcome to our sixth discussion. In this discussion, we'll be talking about section 2.4 on the epsilon delta definition of a limit. So in this video, we'll do examples where we find the largest value of delta graphically. So recall first the epsilon delta definition, which says that we say the limit as x approaches a of f of x equals l if for every epsilon greater than zero, there is a number delta greater than zero such that if zero is less than the absolute value of x minus a is less than delta, then the absolute value of f of x minus l is less than epsilon. Okay, so let's recall graphically what this is describing. So let's draw a picture. Okay, so I'm gonna draw some axes. So I'm gonna draw some axes, and then I'm gonna draw some uh, a curve. So let's say the curve looks something like this, something like this, and then somewhere on the x-axis, I'm gonna label the point A. And on the graph where A is, let's just put a hole there. So let's say that the graph is a hole. And looking at the graph, I'm gonna make the y value at that hole L. So what this definition says is for any epsilon that we pick, an epsilon represents the distance uh, that the y values of our function f of x can be away from L. So if I go up epsilon from L or down epsilon from L, if I go up epsilon, I would end up at L plus epsilon. If I go down epsilon, I would end up at L minus epsilon. So if I consider that range of y values, and I'm gonna draw some horizontal lines here, horizontal line here, I call this range of y values an epsilon window. Okay, so if I label these points where the bottom horizontal line and the top horizontal line intersect my curve and then drop vertical lines down here so I can see the edges of this region, I want to now be able to go some distance delta away from where A is in either direction. So to the right of A and to the left of A, such that when I do go that distance delta away from A, those Y values will remain in this epsilon window. So I just want to be able to find some number delta that does the trick. Okay, so I'm just gonna draw some delta. I'm gonna go some distance delta this way, same distance delta this way. And when I do that, and then look at these, this portion of the graph, I'm gonna put an open circle here and an open circle here because my distance has to be less than delta, so I can't reach those points. And the distance away from A has to be greater than zero, which means I will put an open circle here as well. And then I will shade in this part of the graph and this part of the graph. And that red region that I've shaded in is completely within the epsilon window. All right, so no matter no matter how small our epsilon is, we need to be able need to be able to find such a delta, such a delta for our limit to be L. And I would encourage you to try drawing this, but even if we made the epsilon window smaller, it would still be possible to find a delta for that new epsilon window that works, no matter how small we made our epsilon window. Okay, so let's do some practice problems. So in question five, it wants you to find the largest value of delta such that when zero is less than the absolute value of x minus four is less than delta, then the absolute value of x squared minus 16 is less than seven. So this is really similar to a problem that we did in lecture, just with different numbers, the function is a little bit different. So I wanna first give you four minutes to try question five, and then after that, try to do six, which is to identify the limit that is implied in the previous problem. I know it says previous two problems, that's referring to question number four on the worksheet, which I don't want you to try right now. But pause it in four, three, two, one. Pause the video, try question five for four minutes, and then after that, try question six for a minute. Alrighty, so hopefully you did that. Hopefully you paused it and tried these for a combined five minutes. So the first thing that I wanna notice is that 
a lot of the numbers that show up here, I can match them with the different parts of our epsilon delta definition. In fact, if I zoom it out a little bit, I notice that the four matches up with a in the x minus a, that distance in absolute values is less than zero and delta. And then x squared matches up with my f of x. This 16 matches up with L, and then the seven matches up with epsilon. Okay, so that is important, being able to recognize what those numbers represent. So now, let's draw a picture. So we are working with a specific epsilon here. Epsilon is seven. And we want to find the biggest delta that sort of works for that epsilon. All right, so I'm going to draw some axes. So let's draw some axes. And our function is x squared. So I'm going to draw the x squared graph. So the x squared graph looks something like that. Upward facing parabola. All right, and our a is 4. So we're focusing on the x value 4. And at that x value, we have L being 16. That's, that's the y value there. Just visually from the graph, the limit as x approaches 4 should be 16. And now I want to go uh, 7 up and 7 down from where 16 is, because that's my epsilon. All right, so if I go 7 up from where 16 is, and then I go 7 down from where 16 is, if I go 7 up, I end up at 23, a y value of 23. If I go 7 down, I end up at 9. And now let me draw some horizontal lines to make our epsilon window. Okay, and again, that's coming from the fact that this inequality is saying the distance between my y value on this graph and 16 needs to be less than 7. That's why I'm going up 7 from 16 and down 7 from 16. All right, so now let's find what these two points are. And they're corresponding x-coordinates. And to do that, I need to figure out when my functions, y values, when x squared's y values are, are 9 and when they're 23. So let's set x squared equal to 9. Then we'll set x squared equal to 23. Alrighty, so if I square root both sides of this equation, I'll get x equals, and when I even root both sides, I gotta put a plus or minus, so plus or minus three. But on the side of the graph that we are working with here, x is just three. x is three on our side of the graph. Similarly, for x squared equals 23, square rooting I get x equals plus or minus root 23. And for the same reason, I just need to worry about x equals positive root 23. So same reason. Same reason here. Okay, so I know this x value is 3. This one is root 23. All right, so Let's label these distances from four to these endpoints of our epsilon window. So here is our epsilon. This is an epsilon equals seven window. So the distance from the four to the three, that's one. And then for the distance from root 23 to four, I can do this without a calculator because root 23 is less than a nice square root that I know, square root of 25, which is 5. So square root of 23, I now know is, is less than 5, which means the distance from 4 to root 23 is going to be a little bit less than 1. I mean, it, in the picture, that distance definitely looks smaller than the distance from 3 to 4, but we want to be careful because when we hand draw these graphs especially, we might not be drawing them to scale. So we don't want to just rely on you know, what looks closer in the graph to always tell us, oh, that's the shorter distance. I want to be able to tell it with algebra. So now delta is a distance that I need to be able to travel away from four, such that when I travel that distance in either direction, either to the left of four or to the right of four, that distance delta, I need that portion of the graph to remain inside of this epsilon window. So if I start to travel a distance away from four, I will run into this right endpoint first. And that's what I'll let delta be. That distance from 4 to root 23 is root 23 minus 4. And I'll also travel that distance this way. And that restricts us to this part of the graph. Here's the right endpoint, And then here's the left endpoint. 
I put open circles at both of these because the distance between x and 4 is less than delta. It cannot be equal to delta. OK, then I start to shade all of this stuff in. But I leave an open circle at the point where x is 4 because the distance between x and 4 has to be greater than 0. It cannot be equal to 0. All right, let me label this arrow's distance as delta as well. So let's write down that largest delta. The largest that delta can be is root 23 minus 4. So there's two things I want to note quickly about this. The first is I can't let delta be 1, the distance from 4 to 3. Because if I let that be the delta, I need to be able to go that distance in both directions and stay within the epsilon window. And I can definitely go 1 in the left direction. But if I go 1 in the right direction, I'm going to end up way past root 23. And that would possibly leave me outside of the epsilon window, and that would be bad. The other thing that I want to note is back in our epsilon delta definition of a limit, this just says we need to be able to find a number delta that works. It doesn't say it has to be the largest. And that's why in this picture that I had drawn here, the delta that I had drawn wasn't necessarily the largest delta that works for this epsilon window. It was just any, any delta that, that does work. But in this example that we did, it did specifically say, give me the largest possible value of delta. And that just happened to be this value of delta, this root 23 minus 4, that pushed me to the first one of these edges of my epsilon window. All right, and now let's look at 6. So for 6, we've actually already identified what a is, what our function is, and what l is. We just got to write them all down. This is the limit as x approaches. We know a is 4. We said that already. And then f of x is my function is x squared. And the l we identified was 16. So that's what 6 wanted.